Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Let's Play Star Drive 2 Sector Zero, the new DLC. Without any further ado, I want to jump with you into the game. I want to give you some tips, some tricks, some knowledge I've collected and to look into the game, into the new DLC with you and for you. Foremost of all, before you choose your race, please remember the following. If you're picking a race, you're not picking the racial attributes. You can customize them as you like. If you pick a race, you're picking the size of their ships, which varies. For example, Wolfgar Empires have a very, very small interior in the ship, so they cannot make very powerful ships, only cheap ones. Therefore, the Opteris can make very, very big ships and very, very frightening ships. Because with the same technology level, the ships of the Opteris pack about three times the punch than the Wolfgar can. So keep that in mind, please. Furthermore, if you pick a race, you're picking their racial technologies, which are secret. They're not shown from the beginning. And they're not not—they're minor, they're not game-breaking. But for example, the Wolfgar get a statue that make their people a little bit happier on every planet. And the Opteris get a special fighter base that start five instead of four normal fighters, which is quite good. But not game-breaking, as you know what I mean. Um... As for the new traits, race traits, there is Titan Quest, which actually means that you can only build Titan construction ships, Death Stars, but you can have the technology right from the start. So you can start building a Death Star right from the beginning. Um, please notice that that is not actually a benefit <laughs> because it will take a hell of a lot of time to build your first ship and it will be not outfitted very well. Except, if you take fighter base, then the Titan will be extremely cheap and extremely powerful. But that's a different story. Total War. Well, it's a wonderful game series. I would not recommend it here. And Newcomer, you have to have big balls made of iron uh, to make that one. Because all others will be in advance. I recommend for you Creative, because you can get all the technologies this way. And Subterrain, because you can make the most of every planet. And even tiny planets or asteroid belts that are normally just colonized for their special resources or strategic positions can be made very, very beneficial colonized places with this race thing. Clumsy Spies is not important because if something sp someone spies on me, the only thing he learns that is that I get very angry and stump him. Repulsive. If someone doesn't like me, that's not my problem, it's his, because it's my ships that will be bombarding him. Shuddy Engineers. Minus in hit points. Not important because if my fleet comes, the least of your concerns is my hit point number, because it will not go down. You will die before you get a shot off. Intimate Warriors. Ground combat is for people that do not know how to use bombs. And if it comes to ground combat, technology will prevail. Trust me. Well, if you have any questions about this, please ask. Sacrifices, I can tell you, is absolutely amazing. You can do outrageous things with sacrifice. So, let's go for it. We want maximum number of systems. I want, for political reasons, I want blue. I want brutal. I want eight enemies. And... Don't think we survived that long, but who cares? And we call it the YouTube. Ah! And of course, uh, our race is the YouTuber. And yeah, make them dangerous. Hooray! This will be a very, hopefully, a very short let's play with brutal four times will not survive very long. But that's not the important part. The important part is that I can show you what can be done. So... Click to begin the adventure. First thing you look is if you are in a killing position or not. We are actually in a very, very bad position. If you want to make a real game out of this and to play it yourself, look that you start at the edge of the galaxy very important you don't want to start in the middle because there will be coming from all sides as once and kill you the first thing you notice if you know the old game now there are no more free spaces there are hexes and that is good because you can take control of these hexes building star bases there so actually you can control sectors you build a star base you control the sector there is no more 
camping in your territory or pushing your borders. If you've got the sector under control, the only way to get your way is to kill your starbase and build your own. When you start, you look at your systems. You look how many planets are there. If you have the only planet there, that's bad. If there are more planets, that's excellent. Then you look for the planets themselves. Tiny Tundra is... Uh, tiny is tiny, but at least we get three people out of it. Normals only will get one. There are technologies that can increase that a little. Medium Toxic does not sound that bad, but and you look at this. Acid, ac acidic Atmosphere, that means... Uh, a building that normally takes one gold upkeep will take two gold upkeep. Bad. Then we have a planet Abundant Toxic. Well, that does not sound that bad because it has Diamond Rain. Which actually means that you get plus six BZ just for having this planet colonized. The problem is it's toxic. That means a 50% penalty to your um, upkeep for your buildings. And it will be hard to keep people alive there. When we look around, we'll see this one here. It's uninhabitable, and it's tundra. Actually, that's not bad. It's poor, but it's tundra, so the people will live there. So we take our little ship and send it here to find out what's going on there. And we send this ship there to colonize. Could be worse, so okay. Well, you could say, Boris, go for the diamond drain thing, and we can actually do that. When you think of it, we can do that. It's 6 BC a turn, and if we don't build anything, it won't be that bad. The only problem is, yes, you make 6 BC, but build two, no, but build three buildings that only cost one gold. If you build more and more costly buildings, of course, that six gold will be uh, used up much earlier. If you, for example, build a building that costs three gold upkeep normally, it will cost six, so that thing is gone anyway. So we're going for that planet. Screw it. Technologies. Most important thing. Listen to me. If you listen in no regard to me, just listen in this regard to me. Fusion engines. It's the only, the only engine technology available in the whole game. Get fusion technology. Don't get fusion beams, you will get enough weapons. Don't get fusion powers, you will get better powers. Get fusion engines. There will be no engine upgrades after this one. If you miss this, there will be no engine upgrades. Trust me. Very bad. Blah. Don't want to have that. You want to have fusion engines. Fighter base is the second most important thing you want to have. Why? Because fighter base are cheap. You can build unbelievably cheap ships that have an unbelievably great amount of damage potential if you build a fighter base. Fighter base, best weapon technology ever. No questions asked. Fighter base, build it. Plus, fighter base include fighters, and fighters are automatically upgraded with your best weapon technology for fighters, which is marked by these little ships. So yes, you want fighters because they upgrade themselves without you having paid for it or taking the ship back for... Um, Reinstallment for upgrades. They upgrade automatically. Very, 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 very important. And the next thing you want to have is Xeno Assimilations. Because every time you take an enemy colony down, you get a technology for free. <coughs> Things for free, absolutely amazing. Um, to start with, I want to have the Rover Bay because production, very good. Ships. The number of ships you have is determined by the number of command points. The more star bases you have, the more colonies, the more command points you have. Ships cost a different amount of command points. The bigger the ship, the more command points it costs. But you can get as many corvettes for free as you have command points in total. So it's very good to have good corvettes. And that's where the Opteris come into play. What do I mean by that? A normal corvette has only very small room in it. You cannot build big weapons into it. Normally, you can only build these little pointy things in it. Laser cannons. Totally useless crap. Don't believe in that shit. Rockets. Now watch and learn. Rockets. If you build a normal rocket into it, you will see the firing arc is only very small. So you can either turn your left side, left side to the enemy, then you fire with one rocket launcher, or you can turn the other side, and you will find into with your rocket launcher. So that's not effective, but watch this. You take extended arc, and you can fire with both rocket launchers at the enemy approaching you. Wonderful. Then, you do the following. One ordinance, 
for 182 sec seconds of firing against the enemy. If the enemy is alive after this time, you will surely not be. Engines. One small engine. This thing does not have to move a lot. Nuclear power plants. Two should be sufficient. And then one little piece of armor. And you have 57% of the ship complete, so you can build it. It only costs 41 hammers, so that ship is insanely cheap to build, it's seemingly fast to build, it carries an enormous amount of firepower, more than some frigates of other races. That ship is cheap, it's good, it's what you want, and we call it uh, that way the cheap tuber. Wonderful ship, remember that. So, my wife and my son have arrived, so that is all I wanted to tell you today. If you have any more questions, if you want more tips, if you want to see me play the game, just let me know and I will give all my wisdom to you for free. Just cost your time. Well, then it's not free, but you know what I mean. See you then next time. Bye!